when did sex, if it was ever serious for you, when did it stop being this big serious thing and like was actually a laugh and a good time? Like, is there a story? Was there a person? Was there an experience? Like the one fuck that was like, oh, this is supposed to be a good time. Like, did you have one? <laughs> when I squirted and farted at the same time. <laughs> and, we, and we laugh about it. We're like, and here we are, the expert. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm M Cheeky, a sex educator in London, and today I have the absolute pleasure of sitting with the Oprah of sex, Dr. Tara, to Hello. ask her a couple of questions <laughs> and get to know you better. Oh yeah, come on, How let's do it. I mean, I'm really excited about this because you know, like this is Love Bites by Dr. Tara podcast, so I'm usually interviewing someone. Exactly. Um, you know, like who I aspire to be, Oprah. Exactly. The Oprah of sex. I'm kind of turned around this yes. time and roles reverse, tables are turning. Yeah. So we want to know about you today. I'm excited for it. Good. Let's well, do it. We're gonna start off with a would you rather? Okay. Okay, are you ready? Oh, I know this game. She's ready. Okay, <laughs> would you rather have your parents see your sex tape? <laughs> or every time you jizz or squirt, it's bright green. Oh, damn, you guys got me th on this one. <laughs> I know. I'm going to, I can't deal with like bright light. So I'm going to go with my parents seeing my sex tape. Yeah. I feel like my mom would be proud of me. Yeah. And I kind of agree. It's like a once off and then it's fine. But I feel like bright green jizz is like a maintenance problem. It's true. It's like, true. And I orgasm babies. a lot. I have like multiple orgasms. I can't have like Mesh. flashlight in my yeah. face every time, you know. Yeah. So yeah, my parents can watch my sex tape. <laughs> I feel like loads of people. You're welcome, mom. <laughs> yeah. Loads loads of people might disagree, but um yeah, I think I'm I think I'm going with that too. So Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, getting to what the listeners actually want to know yeah. is um your roots are really fascinating. Like you didn't start off talking about sexy things. Right. Apparently you were a business girly. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> Business girly. <laughs> I like that term a lot. You know, uh, I think this came from my producer. I, we were talking about my past and my like academic past. So I did my undergrad in business, right? I, let me think about it. I think I got an A in finance, A in accounting, A in management, but C minus in ethics and logic. And here we are <laughs> teaching you know? the masses. Yeah, well, it it was a it was a cool start because now I have all the skills to run my own business, and yeah. you know I'm running um, this sex positive business, yes. and I feel like all of those knowledge and skills that I've learned in my undergrad in business has really helped me get here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't think I think that's. Not a lot of people have those two separate backgrounds and I feel like people can underestimate you for just being the one who's talking about sex in this quirky and funny way because sex can be really scary to talk about but you make it fun and funny. So <laughs> why do you use humour when you have everything else to go off of? Why do you choose humour to talk about sex? You know, um, I pride myself for being kind of a, a quirky outrageous funny person yeah i think anyone that has known me from like my teenage year knows that i always i'm like that person with like a a, a one-liner or yeah, yeah. you know the sarcasm or yeah like i i'm generally just someone who is bubbly positive likes to have a good time uh, some of my friends in grad school would describe me as a little crazy and outrageous. Like I like saying outrageous things yes. because it just lightened the room. Like whenever if we are discussing something that is, you know, taboo or it's starting to get like really stressful, yeah. I will add like a joke. And people will laugh and be like, uh, that's so like common Tara. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I started this sex education journey, um, as many of the listeners know, I am a tenured professor at Cal State Fullerton. So teaching is easy for me. Yeah. Teaching people, uh, conveying information, sharing knowledge is not hard. The hard part was how can I talk about sex and you know my topics is not just sex sex it's like sometimes <laughs> very kinky very yeah. taboo how can i make that acceptable in 
the mass, yeah. right? Social media, mass media. How can I make it acceptable? I realized that there is like power to my personality. Yeah. Being someone who people really don't know what I'm about, <laughs> you know? Like she can be really serious and, you know, talk about Aristotle and Socrates. And she can also say like, oh, I ate ass last <laughs> night and watched Survivor. Yeah. So <laughs> she's I, multifaceted. She's multifaceted. <laughs> so I, I realized that there was like a lot of power in my personality and how people perceive me so I'm like I'm gonna use it yeah I'm gonna use that humor and being outrageous saying the things that people think but are not saying um, out loud and put it out there so yeah I, I found a way to merge humor and sex education and boom boom you know we yeah and here we are. And yeah. it has really gotten me so far. You know, the reason why I'm in London is I'm filming a TV show, uh, Celebs Go Dating. Huge. And, uh, huge. I mean, it's so much fun. And yeah, like I'm grateful for all of the different opportunities that I have. And I really think it's because I'm showing my true personality. Yeah. But I wasn't always this way. Yeah. And I can... From knowing you behind the scenes, I can wholeheartedly <laughs> say that this is not like a front. <laughs> Why it's worked for you for so long is because it's not like a strategy. It's like who you are as a person, like your personality comes through. <laughs> and that's why you can keep going at it because it's not like something you have to like conjure up and think about to be like, this is the brand. It's like, no, Dr. Tara is Tara. It's, it's just uh, this. It's just you. Yeah, this is who I am. I wear my heart on my sleeves. I don't ever. Yeah, I love that you say that it's not a strategy. Yeah. How exhausting would it be if this was my strategy? <laughs> <laughs> it, I would be exhausted <laughs> to try to be as bubbly and out there and coming up with like, like coming up with the things you talk about, it's in your brain already. It's yeah. not something you have to like sit for hours no. to think about, which is amazing. And how you said earlier is how, you know, sex is this funny, wild, crazy, silly thing. It doesn't have to be serious, um, right. even though they are taboo topics. Mm -hmm. um, what I think a lot of listeners want to know is like, when did this stop? When did sex, if it was ever serious for you, when did it stop being this big serious thing and like was actually a laugh and a good time? Like, is there a story? Was there a person? Was there an experience? Like the one fuck that was like, ah, oh, this is supposed to be a good time. Like, did you have one? <laughs> when I squirted and farted at the same time. <laughs> And we, and we laugh about it. We're like, and here we are, the expert. <laughs> well, you know, um, to go back a little bit to my, I sometimes call it my previous life. Yes. Um, I wasn't always this person. And I talked, of, I talked about it quite in depth in uh, another episode, if you'd like to hear. It's the History of Dr. Tara episode. And... I talked about how I went through a lot of sexual anxiety. Yeah. Um, I went through a lot of just like shame and body anxiety because I, I grew up in a very sexually conservative environment in Thailand. I went to an all girls Catholic school. And then, you know, being someone who's curious about sexy things, it's just not something that was acceptable where yeah. I'm from and with the people I surround myself with. And then I also talked about, you know, my I, me getting married early and you know got a divorce and how huge that was for me so sex wasn't always funny silly yeah. and a positive thing sex yeah. was actually a quite a negative thing for me yeah or like a chore I feel like a lot of people yeah I was there yeah I was there sex was like a chore um I dread trying to initiate I dread when my partner would initiate it was actually quite um icky yeah icky that's a good word for it you know yeah. um at one point um in my previous marriage where i was you know my stomach would hurt when we start touching each other yeah and at that time i didn't know how to trust my body that TikTok lady that said, your body is intelligent, trust your body, wasn't there yet. Yes. Um, but yes, your body is intelligent. Yeah. Your body tells you things. She knows. And 100%, I would say like, okay, 99.99% of the time when your body is like reacting, yeah. 
um, negatively, you're not in the right situation. Yeah. But I, I didn't trust it because even though I got a C minus in logic, <laughs> I'm a logical person. Yes. So in that really in that marriage, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make it work. I'm, I'm, you know, creating this like chart yeah. of like the pros and cons and the things that I'm going to improve to be a better wife, to show up, to make this work, so to we don't stick fail. it out. So I don't fail, mm -hmm. you know, and being someone who was, you know, in in my own lane, like successful in my career, um, you know, I got tenure in five years after yeah. getting my uh, professor job and publishing. I got um, an award for my research. It's just like I was so successful in other things. And I just was so hung up on how would I be perceived if I get a divorce? Yeah. But at the same time, just not really happy yeah <laughs> and you just have to choose to leave you know a situation that's not good for you and wasn't good for him either yeah. you know um and choose that path instead remember when i decided the big d not yeah. the d that i like yeah. <laughs> when i decided that the big d was gonna come out and you know we're gonna talk about it um gosh, my whole body was hurting. Yeah. Just, you know, I was, um, I experienced an immense bodily pain that I've never had before until actually when I tried like psychedelics and yeah. I actually had a s similar experience. And I just know that that was my body telling me like, ah, oh, this is going to be the most, one, one of the most difficult things you have to yeah. do, but you have to go through it in order to flourish and be who you are. Yeah. And yeah, so back to your question, sex was actually quite scary yeah. and negative and it wasn't anyone's fault. You know, yeah. I was with a great partner, a great human yeah. who wasn't right for me. So it wasn't anyone's fault. It was just always, um, f it felt like, what did Katy Perry say about plastic bag? Drifting through Do the you? wind. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I just felt like that. Like, yeah. I didn't feel grounded. I didn't feel like, oh, I'm in a right relationship. And so sex was quite scary. Yeah. And then, yeah, now after doing a lot of soul searching, sexual awakening, spiritual awakening, and really honoring myself and my body and what I want. Yeah. And here I am really just flourishing and magnetizing everything I want. Yes. You know, I I live a very blessed life, I would say. And I think you get the energy you give. So now that I have, you know, I can't complain. Like now I have everything I want. Multiple orgasms, a beautiful monogamish marriage, mm -hmm. um, an amazing partner, amazing job, amazing friends, understanding family. Like I just know that leaving that, situation and living in my truth and embracing sex positivity yes. sexual curiosity wanting to have sex <laughs> yes um was just the right move for me i love how it all started with like like how sex was kind of the starting point for you deciding for what you want because i feel like sex is normally at the bottom of the list of like priorities or things that um we, where we advocate for ourselves, we'll advocate yeah. for ourselves in like a friendship, in a partnership, in jobs, in job interviews, in like normal spaces, but in sex, like we kind of push ourselves back down. And it's like amazing to see an example of when you actually starting off in like your sexuality, mm -hmm. advocate for yourself and go after and listen to your body that this is what can happen. Like you can live a multi-orgasmic <laughs> life, you know? Wow, you that was an amazing summary. So thank you for that, because that's really the point I'm trying to make is people downplay sex a lot. Yeah. You know, it's and sometimes it's in the background for their own sake so they can stay in a relationship where sex wasn't so good. Or sometimes like maybe they really didn't care or uh, for the I mean least amount of statistics. Some people are asexual yeah. and they don't care about sex. I mean, they can masturbate and do other things, but they don't have the sexual attraction, which is fine. Um, but I think a lot of people are living a lie. Yeah. And I'm calling them out. Yeah. Um, and I want to show you, I want to show like everyone that when you do step in your authenticity, step in your truth. And for me, it was to live a passionate sexual life. I then magnetize all the things that I want yeah. in life. And 
you know, um, here I am. Yeah, yeah. It all started from, and, and now, and now to see that you were saying how sex became funny and silly again when you had a laugh, you know, queefed, squirted, farted, all at the same time. I did time. all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there. Yeah. You know, we've all been there. But it's like, have you laughed when that has happened? And if you're not, like, you're in the wrong situation. Like, if you're getting embarrassed or not feeling comfortable when those things happen to you, like, should we be having sex with those those people if we're not comfortable to do these these things that are ultimately going to happen at some point? Do you oh know what I mean? Oh, my gosh. You know, one comment that I got on TikTok that really hurts me was this woman sharing that her boyfriend accused her of cheating because her vagina was queefing. That she had had sex with someone with a bigger dick and therefore now her vagina is queefing. Is that ridiculous or what? That is, that is so ridiculous, but at the same time my heart breaks because it's like yeah. there's clearly a huge lack of education there that someone wholeheartedly believes this and then pushes those beliefs onto their partners and then ultimately she's going to have to work through a whole lot of shame and sexual anxiety for a long time now because, or maybe he, she can just get him to listen to this podcast and watch your TikToks. Exactly, Instagram. listen yeah. to this podcast. Listen to uh. this podcast, <laughs> show, him, show him the podcast. Like that's untrue, absolutely. But that, that stems from like growing up in conservative backgrounds and families where talking about sex is really uncomfortable if it's ever even done. So if that's how you've been brought up, how do you, what can we give the listeners maybe like two or three tips like that they can start today in overcoming shame and sexual anxiety? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to share three different ways that I personally went through. So I've tested it. I was your guinea pig. I know it works. Hallelujah. But also there's lots of studies to back up all of these methods. Um, the very first thing, and you said this before, is education. Yeah. The very first thing is education, but not everybody can go, you know, take a course and or pay for a course yeah. or, yeah. So to me, the easiest access to um, proper sex education is... <laughs> I mean, for the lack of the word, or the internet. The internet. Because there's a lot of free information out there, but it does take, like, evaluation of credibility of sources, yeah. Critical right? Critical thinking. Yeah, it does take, like, oh, can you trust this source? Because there's a lot of bullshit gurus out there. Loads. Like, so many, so many bullshit gurus, and you just, you can't trust the things that they're saying, yeah. you know? And, uh, and uh, sometimes I'll get, People that are like, well, you can say anything if you preface it with like, well, according to a study, but yes. you know, I mean, a study is a study. It was a systematic way to prove a hypothesis. Yeah. So if someone proposed a hypothesis and research question and went out there, collect data from normal human beings, and then now have a conclusion to tell you, yeah. um, you we can't discount that, right? Like they put an effort into, in, into it. So to me... Um, getting credible sources, reading from the internet um, as a part of education would be one step. Um, in terms of education, if you are able to buy a book, yes. one of my favorite books of all time is Come As You Are by Emelina Gowski. A moment for that book, please. Yes. Changed my life. Changed my life. Mm -hmm. So, so necessary. That is required reading. Thank you. And Emily is on this podcast, Love Bites by Dr. Tara. So definitely listen to that episode. Um, but that book yeah. really is quite, you know, revolutionarily helpful for yeah. a lot of women and men yeah. um, to learn. And I think, yeah, it speaks, it speaks volume that some of my female clients have read the book and came back and was like, oh, my God, that was such a good you know, introduction to everything, yeah. female sexuality. And so, yeah, I would say if you can spend, I think, like, how much is a book? Like $20? Like 10 pounds? Yeah. $20. Oh, <laughs> different currency. Yeah, I would say if you have $20 to spend, buy this book, educate yourself. Because yeah. the number one thing um, in overcoming any kind of uncertainty, which is the cause of a lot of shame and guilt, um, is to educate yourself, is to get the information. Information is power. Knowledge is power. Make sure that you make yourself knowledgeable. Yeah. Um, which then leads to my second point of overcoming shame. Um, 
for me, and lots of studies have proved this, is to understand yourself. Yes. You know, you can't build like certainty, self-esteem, confidence without knowing yourself really well. Yeah. So actually, the first sexual partner that you should know really well is yourself. Um, and I didn't know that until like I was almost 30. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I talk about this uh, quite a few times. Like, you know, I faked many, many orgasms. Um, many times I didn't know how to communicate my needs and desires. Many times I faked orgasms because I'm a people pleaser. I was, and I would say still a little bit am, and I think a lot of people are. Yes. Um, and I didn't want to hurt the other person's feelings. So I kind of just act like, oh, I'm coming. And I'm just so, so good, good at it. At <laughs> <laughs> um, and not honoring myself every single day, it kind of chips away your does, integrity yeah. and who you are. And one day you just realize like, oh, fuck, I've not had an orgasm for 365 days. Yeah. <laughs> so know yourself. Um, and by knowing yourself is, you, you know, studying your body. Um, have you done like kind of pleasure mapping? Yes, absolutely. What are some of your non, uh, what are some of your unconventional spots? Unconventional spots. I would say like the back of my ear. Okay. I like my earlobes. Ooh. Ooh, so I you like like a little, do you like like licking like or nibbling? Nibbling, sucking. I can, Turns I can you fuck on. with that. Yeah. 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 Ooh. And, Ooh. and my toes. Oh. I wouldn't say that's like super unconventional, but I mean for a lot of people that can be like, don't touch my feet type of thing. But like when they're sucking your toes and like making eye contact with you. <laughs> it's hot, right? It's hot, okay. yeah. And there's no no shame in that because, no. you know, we think that these are unconventional to us and that's only because no one's talking about it. Right. But if everyone honestly wrote a little survey down and the whole world, you'd actually find out that you're pretty normal in the majority and i don't mean normal as in like you're strange if you don't if you're not if you don't fit there everyone's normal just everything's as, normal <laughs> ex just as more like i mean majority yeah. you're gonna be there's loads of people that like these things but are too embarrassed to say that they do and they can even be your friend who might shame you for yeah. saying i love my toes being sucked like they did it last night and they're gonna be like but it's just because it's their internal shame yeah. that's making them shame you but yeah. they actually like it too do you know what i mean you know, yeah. in that situation, I like to say it sounds like an issue, not an ish me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and, uh, you know, in my opinion, um, shaming people never really serves anyone <laughs> yeah. to begin with, um, including shaming the current shamers. Yeah. And this is quite controversial because... I have quite a few people ask me like, Tara, why do you try to teach these people who are, you know, on the fringes or like people that shame other people? Why do you even give them a chance? Yeah. Right. Like, fuck them. But I think in a society where there's a lot of fuck them. Yeah. It's just creating more and more divisions. So I'm trying to use humor and sex, two things that everybody likes yes. <laughs> to bring people together and to show the similarities that we all have. And you just pinpoint, like, maybe your friend likes toes sucked too. Yeah. And they didn't have the courage to talk about it and therefore shame other people. So I think the problem is that we've lived in thousands of years of lack of sex education. Yeah. Lack of proper information about sexuality. Um, because, you know, like, a lot of organizations will give you scare tactics. Like if you yep. do this, then you're this. Yep. Like easy example, a lot of men think being pegged means that they're gay. And I'm like, okay, first off, gay is not a bad word. <laughs> like, bad word. Uh, but also like, you know, your butthole is neutral. Yes, like it's not a sexual It's a body part. Yes. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Let's just get that out there. Yeah, back to uh, the second step was to know yourself really well yes. and pleasure mapping. And you were saying that your earlobes and yes. your toes. And my toes. And you were saying that a lot of people actually like feet. And I did like a little campaign for one of the feet company before. Mm -hmm. um, not showing my feet specifically, but like uh, advertising. So I learned that like one in seven people have a foot fetish. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so it is a common thing. It is common. It is common. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. And I feel like one in seven isn't even like 
we could get closer to more accurate <laughs> answer if people were right? honest. I feel like probably more common than getting an iced coffee in Italy. Yeah. I was in Italy, and every time I order an iced coffee, they look at me like I've committed a crime. Yeah, or tea. <laughs> they won't serve you tea there. <laughs> They're like peasants. Iced exactly. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so. Um, trying to think, my so pleasure mapping when I started the process, which actually to encourage all of you to try, I actually tried it not too long ago, so it's never too late. If you're listening and you're like, I'm 42, I don't need pleasure mapping, like you do, so you can start now. Never too late, right? It's never too late. Um, but I realized like what feels really good for me, and. I wouldn't say this is unconventional, but people probably don't talk about it too much. It's like getting kissed um, in the inner in thighs. The eyes. Yeah, and then it's nibble. a yeah, nibble. it's a good, it's a good, it's a good part yeah. of like foreplay, but also all play. Like anytime you can kind of yes. go there and start yeah. licking and sucking, and it feels really good. Yeah. But you know, growing up um, in my like teenage years, I also really liked my, the back of my ears and the back of my neck. Yeah, um, like played with. I remember um, one of the people that I hooked up with. I went to an all girls school, so my first love um, was a girl, and uh, we we would like you know make out um, in any dark corners. And I remember the very first time someone licked the back of my neck, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> And I got super wet. Yeah. Because you know when you're a teenager, you get super wet all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I got super wet and I was like, oh my God, what is that? Yeah. And yeah, so. Now, now you know. Now I know. Yeah, so go and when this episode ends, <laughs> pleasure map time. Yeah, I think we should talk a little bit about what it is though. Because I feel yes. like I just jumped into like what's your and what's erogenous your, yeah, zones. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, so tell us, what is pleasure mapping? Well, you're the sex educator too, so I want to hear from you. Okay. Uh, what's pleasure mapping? If like, if an 18-year-old asks you, you know, yeah. the easiest explanation. The easiest explanation for pleasure mapping is finding what your like go zones are and your not so go zones are. And kind of like starting really slowly and exploring, not in like a, not in a porn way, like kind of, take any other influence or visions or um, media that you've seen talking about sex and just kind of throw that out the window for a bit. Set the scene and spend some time with yourself seeing, obviously we recommend doing this alone first mm -hmm. and then you can always pleasure map with partners as they come in. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just like, what feels good for you? Like, does the elbow feel good? Does the like light touching or is it like no. hard? You know, not no, not for me. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm like, and can I come right now? No, no. <laughs> and then go to the nipples. And yeah. then we go down the body. And it's like um, playing with certain parts of our vulva and vagina and pressures and mm -hmm. and just noticing. That's all it is. It's not mm -hmm. like I'm, there's no goal of like I'm finding the best spot. Right. We're just noticing. Yeah. We're just noticing. Oh, that feels good. That doesn't feel so good. That feels like nothing. Mm -hmm. That feels fucking amazing. Like mm -hmm. like that there. And just exploring and figuring out what works for you, practicing that in masturbation, and then using that with a partner to be like, this is, let me show you what feels yeah. really good for me so that you can communicate and collaborate to have a great sexual experience. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> you got an A for that speech Thank because you. that was perfect. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. It, if I was 18, now I understand. Now you understand. Yes, but you can be <laughs> any age and now understand. Um, I was thinking too, like when I started pleasure mapping, which is like not too long ago. Okay, so like you have time, like you can do it whenever. Um, I remember back when I was like, I think 21 or 22, one of the guys that I was hooking up with, one of the guys <laughs> that I was hooking up with, loved um, getting his knees licked. Okay. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I remember coming home and just trying to play with it. I'm like, nothing, not for nothing, me. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, you know. But I'm, I'm almost jealous. Like, yeah, you've got more pleasure spots than me. How yeah, that fair? You're exactly. God's favorite. <laughs> so, if if you have any of your any part of your body that you feel like is quite a turn on or it feels really good for you, that is unconventional. Know that it's like very normal. 
like people have one or two that is kind yeah. of not the go-to, right? The nipples always feel good. Although I feel like I've been hearing more and more women saying they don't like their nipples sucked or I played with. I've been hearing that too, and I'm not understanding. <laughs> but that just like comes back to being, why would you enjoy? Like, obviously there are like, it is a area of pleasure for so many people because of like the blood vessels and all of that stuff. Right, like the, an, it's anatomically yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's there for so, pleasure yeah. as well. Um, and then also we've seen it in our, in our brains, in porn, in the media, and like maybe it's just really kinky for us. But I think when that happens, it's like always come back to like not yucking someone else's yum. Yeah. Just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And that's cool. Like as long as we're not shaming each other on what works for you and what doesn't work, then that's fine. Don't feel like maybe you don't enjoy, like lots of people also don't enjoy penetration. Right. And for a lot of people, they're like, how on earth do you not? Right. But it's like, it just comes back to the fact that we're all different. We all play different sports or have different hobbies. Like mm -hmm. we're not all going to enjoy the same thing sexually. So period. Yeah. Period. Have you had, <laughs> this is a quick pivot, but have you had uni? No. Sea urchin, like in sushi. Ah, no. It's an acquired taste. Like some people absolutely love uni and some people just hate, like they can't even smell it to, like yeah. from the other person sitting next to them. And uh, I just think like, you know, in that scenario, there's people that go, why would you eat that? That's so gross. And then there's people that are like, wow, that looks interesting. I'd never eat it, but you know, enjoy. Enjoy, yeah. It's as simple as that. Why can't we all just be like that? Be that person. I would not eat that, but enjoy. Have a great, have a great time with it. Right, so yeah. Good. Like if you don't <laughs> eat ass, it's fine. <laughs> you yeah. I don't eat ass, but enjoy. Enjoy. Right. Yeah, Why that. you gotta go th the extra step and be like, God, people like this are so and so and so. Yeah. You know? No. And we, I mean, we all know people people that pr press negative judgment on others, especially for like private matters, like what they like sexually, is because they're uncomfortable with themselves. Yeah. Period. Definitely. So like tying back to our tangible tips, we've got, um, we've got pleasure mapping and we've got education. And I think the third one that I've learned um, in my own personal experience, growing up in a conservative family, conservative background, and feeling super uncomfortable talking about sex, was speaking your shame and receiving empathy. Mm -hmm. I think people really underestimate that shame can't exist mm -hmm. because shame you know, thrives when you are judged and you feel guilty and you feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. But if you speak your shame and someone's like, that's okay, that's normal, shame can't exist anymore if someone meets you with empathy. Mm -hmm. So it's talking to the right people. Mm -hmm. And I think when we talk about empathy, something you and Oprah, the queen, you know, Oprah have in common is empathy. So Thank who you. first showed you empathy and how did you then learn to cultivate that for yourself and then now for all of us? Wow, that's an amazing question. Um, now I'm trying to be the person that gives people empathy for yeah. whatever they're into, as long as it's not illegal. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> but going back to who first showed me empathy, I would say I like... Try, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I would say as a kid, you know, I think many people showed me empathy, but I wasn't smart enough to like process that like, oh, people were really being kind and um, empathetic to me. So I'm going to give an example of like a recent, you know, example of when someone was really understanding and, and giving me a chance to explain yeah. myself. Um, well, one of my best friends, Mark, hi, um, we did our PhDs together and he was always there for me through like really thick and thin. I went through a lot of, you know, I went through my hoe phase. I went through my, and I say that with like empowerment. I went yes. through my hoe phase. I went through my like serial monogamy dating phase. I went through my like, am I polyamorous phase? I went through my like, am I bisexual or pansexual or not at all phase? Yes. Am I, you know, am I, a, am I a just like a simple whore <laughs> phase? Uh, oh, now I'm married, but I'm constantly thinking about other people phase. Like, yeah. So he went through a lot with me yeah. and me like changing all the time and was never judgmental. Yeah. And I think it's such a blessing to have someone like that in your life. Yeah. It's, it's crucial 
in order to stay sane, (laughs) to have a friend that's always there for you, thick and thin, and truly believes in you, that you are a good person, and you're here to, you know, serve. You're here to serve the people, you're here to serve the world. And now in my life, I try to embody that service mindset. Am I serving anybody? Right. Like, of course, I have to serve myself too. Yeah. I have to love myself and, you know, make sure I'm OK, honor myself. And I do all of those things. So now in my mind, I'm more about service. Yeah. Um, if I'm showing up at this, let's say the place where people don't think about service, like if I'm showing up at a party. Yeah. You know, how can I be of service? Um, and in my in my own way. It's through allowing people to talk about their sex life to me. Yeah. Because oftentimes people do not have someone like me in their life or someone like my friend Mark. Um, You know, maybe they're understanding through everything else except the sex thing. Yeah. Right. A hard topic. So I try to serve others by being the person that gives them empathy. Like whenever they say something in a shameful way, like, hey, like, this, this has been going on with me, what's wrong with me? I immediately say, nothing's wrong with you. Yeah, you're normal, All you're good. You're fine. Yeah, nothing's wrong with you. Let's unpack. Yeah. Um, and I think that immediately puts a lot of people at ease in my presence. And I just end up with the craziest stories. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah, yeah like I, people will tell me anything about sex. Yeah. Like, and you know, sometimes it's like a person on a train and they will tell me like, oh, you know, I just, I really love putting whipped cream up my girlfriend's ass and then squeeze it on and put it in my mouth yeah. and then jerk off. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. Like, thanks for letting me know yeah. because I'm the person who doesn't go like, what's wrong with you? Yep. And it's as, as simple as that. So yeah, thanks for bringing up the topic of empathy. I've always thought it's really important. And fun fact, the research that I submitted to the National Communication Association conference that I won top paper for was actually on empathy. Yeah. I talked about um, five effective ways to express empathy for a friend. And I try to embody the same thing for everybody that I come across. Yeah, I think it's more helpful than anyone. And we see it, like I see it manifest when, like you said, people on the train, I've had like a complete random stranger yeah. who's escorting me in a quarantine hotel, open up about the fact that they can't last long. Only because, you know, I was like, oh yeah, I'm a sex educator. And they hear that and they're like, oh my God, this is an opportunity for me to feel normal again. And yeah. when you don't react with shame, it's like, then shame just washes away from them because they're like, ah, oh, I don't have to feel shit about yeah. this. Like, <laughs> yeah. I can talk about this and then the person's just like listening to you as if you're talking about anything else. And you see people like unravel because they have to hold it in for so, you know, so many years, the shame until finally someone's like, no, you, you're good. Like, I love hearing fine. that. Yeah. And you know what you just did was inception. Like you start with that little, little moment yeah. of the, a stranger that went to him like, that's fine. Yeah. Then he starts going, oh, maybe it is. Maybe and then yeah. who knows where he is now in the world and what he's experiencing. But I'm pretty sure um, that has started him thinking, okay, not lasting long isn't something to be ashamed of. Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah. like the ripple effect. So um, Yeah, I would say on that third point, when we're talking about, you know, empathy and having empathy for others as well as yourself, I think overcoming shame has a lot to do with sexual communication. And you said this. You said this yourself. Like, speak the truth. Yeah. Right. Just speak it out loud. Um, I know. We know it's hard. Right. Brave. Yeah. It's it. actually very hard um, to talk about why you're so ashamed about certain things. But um, sexual communication is the strongest predictor of long-term sexual satisfaction. Yeah. Every study I've read found this, and as well as my study um, based on five thousand in participants so we really have to as an era like (laughs) as a generation as this group of people that live on earth right now like we really have to try yeah to communicate about sex more and help normalize talking about it because we all have it the reason why you're here is because your parents had sex (laughs) so yeah we have to normalize sexual communication Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you can't talk, you're already getting so intimate with this person, like 
seeing them naked, letting them, you know, like, you know, do something that feels really intimate for a lot of us. Being able to communicate should be up there with like prioritizing, like, should I be with this person if I feel comfortable enough to talk to them? So, yeah, so I feel like we've moved from over the shame and now we're moving into like the hot and sexy era you know where we want to be where we hot all girl era be. hot girl era we're feeling sexually confident and i want to know when does dr tara feel most sexually confident can you set the scene for me you know this is not going to be the answer that satisfies you but it's the truth is the truth is i feel the most sexually confident when i make someone laugh i love that yeah when someone laughs i'm like yeah i'm gonna go masturbate now bye <laughs> Yes, give me Yeah, like I, I just enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. saying funny sexual things and people laugh and then it gets me off. Literally, like I, I would, you know, for example, like right now I'm filming on uh, Celebs Go Dating and if I like crack a sex joke on set and everyone's laughing, it makes me feel really good because number one, I'm normalizing sex talks. Number two, everyone is having a good time. And number three, I feel like I'm serving the cause that what I'm about. It's what yeah. I'm about. So yeah, when I go home, I feel very empowered. I'm like telling my husband, come on, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> I turned myself on at work. I was really me and like, I love that. Yeah, and now I'm here and I, you know, I wanna get fucked. <laughs> Perfect. So, okay. If there was one thing that we could make sure like a hundred percent that a listener hears and remembers today, what would that one thing be? You know, because I've, I've said about, I've said a lot of things about sexual communication. So I think people now know how important it is. Yes. So I don't need to stress it again. Um, I do want to go back to what I did and you know, the reason why I'm able to be here and magnetizing all the things that are um, all the successes in my life um, is actually find your value, um, something that you're really about and go for it. Live authentically in that value. For me, it was passion. Yeah. I wasn't living in passion in my previous marriage and it was very, very, very difficult to leave. But I had to, I had to honor myself and the value that I have, which is living a passionate life. Yeah. If I can't do that there, I must move on. Yeah. So what is your value? You yeah. know, what are you about? Yeah. What do you stand for? And are you living in that value right now? Yeah. I live passionately every single day. You know, even, even just a, chill day i make sure that it's a passionate day for me yeah right and it can be something very simple so for me passion is my value um am, am i passionate about this project am i passionate about this friend am i passionate about going to this party am i passionate about reverse cowgirl i'm not um am i, <laughs> am I passionate about sucking toes like you know i i yeah. think about these things yeah. and and see if it aligns with my values so yeah, my last words would be like, what is your value and are you living it? Yeah, and if you're not, be brave enough to go and go live in that. You life have to be. Yeah. It's YOLO, baby. You only, you only live once. You do. So thank you. So we're going to end with um, some quickies. Shall we yes. do that? Shall we yes. get it? Are you going to loop me up first? Oh, they're not painless, are they? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to loop you up. You can sit right there. Okay. Say, hands off for this one. Okay, number okay. one, are you ready? Yes. Wearing a vibrator to dinner date like hasn't everyone done this i hope so yeah <laughs> i hope so it's worth it <laughs> so we're going we're going yes on that one yes. like absolutely okay number two sucking dick down a water slide i feel like that's such a hard like thing to think about logistically but i'm gonna say i'm out for the challenge okay i respect that i'm just seeing vomit <laughs> coming down the water slide with me so um, that's my no, I, there needs to be some type of contraption that like, ah, <laughs> like you know, you my mean. face doesn't move. <laughs> okay, next question. Next question. What is your go-to role play character? Oh, easy, Professor. Because <gasps> it's not a role play, isn't it? Well, I feel like that's kind of a cop-out answer. Slightly cop-out, we I'm need a, another one. I'm a professor. Yeah, okay, Um, a cat. Ah. Yeah, like a, like a meow. <laughs> And sometimes, rawr, depends. Okay, well, that's great. Because leading on to this one, wearing a pet collar and ears to a seafood buffet. Uh, first off, I would never go to a buffet. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good to know. I always talk about this. And I think if you've listened to me for a long time, you know I'm not a fan of buffets because when you overeat, you don't have sex. 
Yeah. That's when you go home, fall asleep, and be lazy. Yeah. So no, no buffets for me. However, the pet collar I like. Yeah. You I would like. wear. I would wear a pet collar Some and maybe it. ears. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. To last go to a really nice restaurant. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Last one. You are at a sex party with the cast of Friends. Who do you fuck first? Joey, because he's funny. This is easy. Ah, I see. I would. I don't actually care the cast of Friends. If Jennifer Aniston is anywhere near me, it's always. always she is good. hot. She is America's sweetheart. She is. I yeah. Know. But honestly, I mean, she's. I feel like she's cute. I feel like Monica's hot. That's fair enough, yeah. But she's, maybe I want to be a... dominant with Jennifer. Oh, that's right. And maybe I want to sub with Monica. You you give me dom energy Do for I? sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel like. Are you a little bit of dummy mummy? I wish I was, but I'm. You. Were... I wish I was, but I'm such a, a verse. Sub, but... Are you a verse sub? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> can I can be mummy sometimes, but yeah, it takes a lot. But anyway, yeah. So. <laughs> There we go. I feel like we've definitely got to know you a whole lot better. So, yeah, thanks for answering our question. Thanks for interviewing me today. This is uh, different for me for sure, but I really enjoy it and you're such a good interviewer. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Such a pleasure. My Love Bites fam, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I love all of you guys. Don't forget to like and share this episode. That means so much to me. And per usual, have an orgasmic day. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. This was, this was Love Bites. Love Bites. By Dr. Tara. Follow Dr. Tara on social media at lovebites.co. Have an orgasmic day.